guys, thought I'd do something a bit different today. I have a couple of uh, LSDs which I'm working on and while I had them apart I thought I'd talk a bit about how they work. I'm replacing the clutches with a kit that I got from Thayer Motorsport and I'm replacing the faulty top cap with a piece that I um, was made by Bimitune. I found both these guys really good to deal with so I just thought I'd give them a little bit of a shout out before I get started. So to begin with, what is an LSD? Well, it stands for a limited slip differential and it's a type of differential gear. Now, there is more than one type of LSD. What we're looking at here is a clutch type cam driven LSD. Uh, it's from a BMW E36. Now, I'll get more into what all that means in a little bit, but this is a really good diff to demonstrate the principles of operation. It's actually quite an old design and it's very simple. However, only a little bit of modification and this would be almost identical to what you would find as the most common LSD in sports cars currently. When a car goes around the corner, the inside track is going to move slower than the outside track. So, this becomes a problem, it makes it very difficult to turn if you lock your wheels together. In the early days, the way to get around this was to only power one wheel, but as power increased, it wasn't really a good solution. So they introduced an open differential gear. Now, these are really good. They do exactly what they're supposed to. They're very robust and they're very cheap. So most cars will use these. They only really become a problem when you have a lot of power, where it is possible for an open differential to direct 100% of your power to just one wheel and you'll spin out. So how does it work? Keeping in mind it's a limited slip differential, it's not designed to stop wheels entirely turning at different speeds, it's meant to limit the amount of slip. Now the way that a clutch type LSD achieves that is it uses clutches, that's one there, uh, to provide friction to limit the difference in speed between wheels, not to stop it. The centre component here, referred to as a spider gear, is exactly the same mechanism that you would find in an open diff. As you can see, as I rotate the assembly, I can make one side rotate at a different speed to the other. In order to limit the slip, the clutches provide friction, and in some cases lock. By setting up the pressure applied to the clutches, you can effectively adjust when free spin is possible. The whole assembly here, the dish center, would be rotating as you drive, driving each wheel. If one wheel starts to spin at a different rate, this part of the assembly, the cam, will push the center apart, applying more pressure and therefore more lock to the clutches. Now I'm exaggerating the movement, but you get the point. The angles cut into the surface here, the ramp angles, are what adjust how much lock is applied under acceleration and deceleration. The shallower the angle, the more lock it will allow as pressure is more easily transferred into the clutches. By having different angles, this allows you to get a one-way, 1.5-way, or a two-way LSD, which is really just a fancy way of saying different amounts of lock under acceleration or deceleration. So this whole assembly goes into this large unit here, the diff carrier. It's held in place with some washers and springs. These bent washers are a Belleville washer, and are actually a type of spring. As the clutches and friction surfaces wear out, these will expand, keeping the whole device relatively within spec. The clamping pressure from these is what sets the breakaway torque, and not the percentage of lock. You will often hear of people using shims to put more pressure on the clutches, claiming it will increase the amount of lock from, say, 25% to 50%. But that's not how it works. That changes the breakaway torque, which is the amount of force required to get the wheels spinning at different speeds. One of the benefits of this clutch type design is a relatively small unit, and you can just keep adding more clutches depending on your application. Being used in a low powered application, this is a small diameter two clutch design. A drawback though is that like with your manual clutch, it will eventually wear out and just become an open diff. Now, the biggest drawback of this type of LSD is heat. There's a lot of friction going on in this device and it gets very, very hot. If you think about it in terms of efficiency, 
about 5% of your drivetrain losses will be going through your diff, which means that even in a small 100 kilowatt application, as much as 5 kilowatts of power will need to be dissipated through your diff. Usually, most of that will be dissipated as heat. Now that is why it is absolutely critical that you use the correct kind of LSD oil, otherwise your diff will weld itself solid, assuming it doesn't fly apart first, um, and it will only take a few minutes of hard driving for that to become a problem as well. In fact, these get so hot that when I pulled the drive shafts out of this unit, where the ends of them sit inside the centre of the diff, they'd actually been heat blued, which means that inside the diff it was as much as 300 degrees Celsius. So that's it, um, hopefully you got something worthwhile, that's the basics on how this kind of diff works. Uh, if you've got any more questions, leave them in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe and like for more videos. Thanks!